knows that everything inside of him, he disfigured himself to where he no longer looked like the person that he was born to be. And any man who wants to father children, who wants children, wants to father his children. And if he fathers them, he wants them to look like him. A little bit. <laughs> I have have his feet, his, his toes, you know, his ears, his lips. I have something, all right? I have something to let him know that he was indeed the DNA donor in that situation. <laughs> this man wanted children. But he didn't want to father them because they will look the way he looked when he was born. And he hated himself so much. He loathed what was inside of him so much that he wanted to look like what he had created himself to be. This is deep. The tragedy was not the fact that this man took his own life as he took all these different drugs. The tragedy the man had lost himself. He had lost his entire identity. He had no idea who he was. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and turn around and lose his self, his own soul? And what would a man give in exchange for his soul? Barack Obama, on the other hand, was searching to find himself. He writes about it in his book. And he found himself in Chicago on the south side when he found a woman by the name of Michelle. She helped him find himself as to who he was. And so he anchored himself in who he was. Michael says it doesn't matter whether you're black or white. Obama says it does matter, but it's not the final determiner. It does matter because we just can't erase history, but it's not the final determiner. So both of these men, this is an interesting paradox. On the day that the nation was mourning Michael Jackson's death, Barack Obama stood in Russia at one of the most prestigious universities, business schools there, and he was talking about the virtues of capitalism, free enterprise, and a free government. Two men, different sides of the mountain, became the two most recognized black men in the world. But lives have a total different impact. One came to know Christ as a result of a wife who anchored him in the Christian faith. And Barack Obama, whether you like his politics or not, he might be the most relaxed person I've ever seen. The most relaxed person I've ever seen because he's comfortable in who he is, where he's come from, and I think he got some idea of where he's trying to go. That's why we got to fight for the soul of this nation. The soul of this nation is in the children. That's what the soul of this nation is. The soul of this nation is in this next generation. And that's why we got to fight for them. And we got to maintain a church that stands for something. And we got to try to encourage them. And we got to try to help them to be comfortable inside their own skin, to be whatever it is that God has called them to be and be comfortable with that and to realize that God can glorify himself in and through them if they will surrender themselves to him. I'm through. Let's pray, shall we? Father, we bow before your name, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one with the ultimate power and authority. And Lord, we know that it's only in you that we really find ourselves. That's what your word teaches us. If we try to save our lives, if we try to recreate on our own life, we lose it. When we give and surrender our life to you, we find it. I pray, Lord, that uh, as we fall before you, that we will find our life in you and in service to you. And I pray if there's someone here this morning who's never come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that maybe they didn't realize that God loves them just the way they are. 